going to cheat a little bit. We had some horses in Dubai this year, so I had I had ten days out in Dubai or twelve days out in Dubai of two, three different stints, you know. But generally, we're breaking them in, getting the babies going, educating them, and getting them going forward. And you know, we're at a stage now where where, where they're starting to do a little bit of fast work. So so the dreams are starting to come alive, and you know, we just hope that something flies, and you know, that we can we can get a group one horse. You know? We are, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I shouldn't say this. I'm not a huge fan of the all weather. I believe I'm second in the all weather's table. But the sort of the horses I run in the all weather aren't mapped out for it. It's it's just horses I get left with as such. But I mean, we've had a 17 or 18 winners on the all weather this year. But I find it hard to get motivated with it now. And really looking forward to the grass again. I mean, I think the grass is proper racing. You know. It is. They're nearly two years, well they are two years of age, the whole lot of them. Um, as I say, yeah, Loch Moy is uh, uh, quite a big strapping coat there and he's just grown a little bit on us, so you've got to wait for them. Uh, he's, he's grown a little bit, gone on the leg as we call it. He's still only a two year old. Just, I mean when we bought him he was, he was, he was quite a big horse, but as I say he's just grown a little bit more uh, at the back end and he just has to catch up. But he sat up sides a couple of times, shows a real good winning attitude and, and look, hey, he's, uh, he's only a baby and we're, we're delighted with him and everything he's done, he's done with a good attitude as well. Now. Philly, he bred himself as an oratorio filly. We, we had the sister this year, she did win a, a race. On pedigree she's going to want six, seven furlongs, she might even get further. But she's shown a good attitude as well, I mean, for, for 5,000, I mean, I... I, I don't know what it'll cost Jim to breed her, but it, it would have been a lot more than 5,000. So she was sound and right, and there was nothing wrong with her. And it, it just looked like that uh, she was going to make nothing, and she did. And I said to Jim, well, look, I'll syndicate in the yard for you if you want. And he decided to stick her in the syndicate, you know. And have syndicates like this been a boom for, for trainers like you? Or? It's been a huge help to, to the likes of me. I mean, especially when you've got somebody who's as good as the lads running it, it's, it's, you would like to think it would be very successful. Um, but any new adventure takes a little bit of getting off the ground and uh, I think once the horses start running I think they'll sell the shares because I think looking at Mark's horse as well, because we were actually underbidder to, 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 to Mark's filly, um, and that's why Jim went and bought it off Mark, so we liked her at the sales and she looks like she's done well, it's the first time I've seen her since the sales. But I think once they start running and showing, showing decent form I think it'll It'll soon, soon, soon sell, you know. You've got to be in love with racing to be involved with horse racing, you know. It's got to be, you know, it's got to, it's got to be something you're interested in. But I think we find there a guy, if, if, if he buys a horse and it wins, it's a fantastic day. We, we always forget what a winner means to, to people, you know. Uh, it's, it's their moment in the sun as such, you know. And, I often say to my assistant there, you know, instead of trying to win the, the 50 grand race, let's go and win a little race and sort of 10 grand race and let, 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 the, owner, um, let the owner have his day. So, so. Would you get pleasure out of seeing the owner? I think it is, yeah. And plus, we're living with these horses. We eat, sleep and drink with them as such, you know. And, uh, you know, when, when, when you get two-year-olds like this, they're untried and you pick them out of the sales and they end up being successful, you do get a, a lot of pleasure out of that, you know. But as I say, touch wood, we we'll have a bit of luck, and the horses stay sound, and because the horses look okay, you know. I think some owners do come in and expect it that it's it's a simple game. It's not a simple game, but to be fair to this syndicate, they've they've narrowed all the gaps. They've, I'd like to think they've got two good trainers. Well, I know they have, and they spent a lot of work buying these horses. You know, we have looked at. Sort of four, four, four and a half hundred horses to buy these for. So, you know, there's been a lot of, lot of groundwork put in here. It's, we haven't just gone to sales. Oh, I like the colour of that one. Let's, let's pick him. You know, Jim did a lot of work before the sales, and we looked at a lot of horses, and it should work. It should work well. We'll cope well. I mean, Paul, Paul will write for us when available there, but. I mean, we've got Tony Hamilton there, we've got Freddie Tikalicki, Barry McHugh, Lee Topless, Shane Kelly. We've, 
Laura Barry, Char, George Chandler. I mean, I am sort of. We've had three champion apprentices before, but when Paul was first jockey, it was hard really to get a to get a guy a champion apprentice. So I'll, I'll look down that avenue as well. But Tony Hamilton for me, if if I had I my mean, last hundred pound in my pocket and I wanted the picky jockey to have it on riding it on the day, he would be the man. You know, he he, he never lets us down. Now.